Hello. Today we are here with author and activist Joe D. Cruz. Joe D. Cruz has 25 plus years, actually 30 years experience in the shipping industry. He hails from a fisherman's family in Tutikoran. His novel, Ari Sur Ullagu, won the Tamil Nadu State Award and Korkai won the Sahitya Academy Award. In conversation with D. Cruz. Um, so first question, what do you think about Pondi? And what do you think about the Lit Fest being held here? I'm really surprised to have a Lit Fest and my participation also in Pondi Lit Fest. I have been associated with Pondicherry, uh, coming and going, uh, since 2004, because my wife got carried. And uh, I used to bring her here because she has got a relative house here. And with my profession, I normally travel a lot all over India mm. to the global uh, places. So uh, we were alone. We were not with my family because my family, father and mother were back in my village in uh, Tunnel Valley District, Govari village. So I thought it is better for me to bring her here. And it is not her parents are not there, but relatives. So since then, I've been coming and going. I don't know how many times I have traveled, driven car uh, from Chennai to <coughs> Pondicherry. But it is always a pleasure driving a car from Chennai on the East Coast. And uh, Pondi, you know, for the, known for the fact of, uh, to the youngsters and the people, like Pondi in the sense, it's, uh, it's if the, the moment you uh, uh, name Pondicherry, uh, smile automatically spreads in your face and then it is Pondicherry always giving. You know, what is the reason? And the same reason is also giving me pleasure. Okay. And I'm very happy. And still Pondicherry is also conducting a, a lit festival. Mm. And I'm associated with literature now, now as of now. I'm happy uh, to be uh, one of the participants in uh, Pondicherry Lit Fest of 2018. We are very happy to have you here. So you have written a historical novel called Korkai based on the TN fishermen's lives. Yeah. Okay. Has anything <clears throat> changed for them after the publication of your novel? Today, see, like when I call myself, you call me, I'm a son of a fisherman, right? Yeah. But uh, fact remains, my parents are slightly elevated from the fishing activity. My mother is an elementary school teacher and my father is a sailor. Sailor means on a merchant marine ship. About 40 years, he has been working in Chow Gle Steamship Limited mm. as a sailor. And I have seen him in my childhood and younger days and college and all. He, was, he used to come as only for holidays, uh, me uh, on three months or four months or something like that. And always on the ship. Now, and uh, the person, uh, the slightly elevated from the uh, already existing uh, people in the village, uh, automatically there will be a compulsion from the family that I should not go to the seashore, get involved in fishing, move around with the fishing uh, friends. All that was there, that restriction was there. But I was breaking that barriers and always I was roaming around, feeling, living, uh, enjoying with my friends who are still fishermen. So my classmates who have become fishermen and fishermen already uh, no school fishermen, uh, dropout fishermen. And even after uh, uh, getting education, they become fishermen. All that day, I was living with them, living with them and enjoying with them also. Mm -hmm. And I also went into fishing activity. If today, any uh, particular fisherman, he claims himself as a fisherman, professional fisherman. Mm -hmm. Jordi Cruz can also claim as a professional fisherman because I know fishing. Coconut line, net, gill net, trawl net or any type of different fishing, Jordi Cruz is also aware because I have used to that. Mm -hmm. Unless and otherwise, uh, you have an experience like this, you cannot bring out the life and you cannot chronicle the life of the fisherman. So that is what, that is the basic for me. Mm. And from that basis, from that basic, I started uh, chronicling life. Mm. I, con I don't call myself as a writer, oh, yes. because you know, that I have not reached to that level. There are many people, big people, you know, very scholarly people are there. I cannot compare uh, myself with the scholarly writers. So I'm trying on the way. Is religious conversion still common in the community? Has anything changed after the controversy that happened? See, the, religi uh, the religious conversation is uh, continuing 
this is I I want to make a full stop here because there is a misunderstanding about the conversion took place in India, uh, particularly down south. There was a conversion. This conversion has taken place in the early 1530s. The Portuguese came. At that time, there was a big story. I have to tell you, there is, I need long time because I can make it very short. Portuguese entered into the, they have landed in Kerala coast in Calicut. And they wanted a son of the soil or a community of the soil to be their guardians. They want the valiant warriors in India because they have come to India. The place is not known. The culture is not known. Language is not known. And they want to do business here. To do a business, somebody has to protect them. And they cannot protect, uh, they cannot bring an army with them as a businessman. They cannot bring an army with them. So they need somebody else's help. This is one stand. Somebody is in need of something. This is one stand. The other stand here, there is a community called Barada. I belong to Barada community. This community is normally regarded as fishermen. But don't limit them as only fishermen. That is what I was telling in the other place also. Now, these people are the great sailors. They were the salt making people. They were great exporters and importers. Today, we are talking in Tamil literature. The top of Tamil literature is called Silapadigaram, written by Ilango. Now, Silapadigaram talks about the life of the coastal Barada community. And Kovalan is a son of Manaigan, ship owner. And Kannagi is a daughter of exporter, Ma Satuan, like that. So, this is a literature, Silapadigaram spoke about the Barada community and the Tamil community and we regard it as Tamil great literature. So, these are the things which I want to prelude, you know. Now, this community has been converted into Christianity. And today, people will say, for money, or in Hindi they will say, Makan, Kana, Kapada, they have been converted. It is not at all. This is not true. Maybe today you see the conversions are going on today. Maybe for the reason Kana, Kapada, Makan. That, is, that may be understood or accepted. But when the conversion took place in 1530s, that was not the story. That was a story of protecting the livelihood. The Barada community, I told you, they were the pearl divers. They were the great sailors. These people wanted to protect the, the right of the pearl diving in that area. It is not the Coromandel coast. It is the pearl fishery coast, which is starting from Vembar, Vaipar, Tutukuran, Punekail, Uvari, and up to Trivandrum. That place is a coral reef area. This coral reef area is very rich for pearl fishery. And these people, the chieftain of that Barada community is called Pandyabadi. It's a small time king. And he is called Pandyabadi. He has got a big palace there. And he was ruling that area. He was ruling the fishing, ruling the pearl fishery coast. And that time, the, there were a lot of attacks on this pearl fishery coast. One side, it is from the Vadugas. There was an attack. The Vadugas wanted to, maybe the, the Vijayanagar temple and the representative of the Vijayanagar temple who were there, the Nayak, Nayak kings, they were coming and attacking these people to get control of the pearl fishery coast. One, one side. The other side, even the Christianity from the Cochin side, they were trying to attack here. And the other side, there are three, three places attack was there. The other side is an attack from the Arabs. Arabs were coming and attacking here. Already, the Barada community is a staunch Hindus. They have a strong beliefs. We were worshipping our forefathers. Now, there is, a, there is an attack on our livelihood. It is not just for sapad. It is not for food. It is the livelihood. If the livelihood is lost, the generation's livelihood will be lost. This is the understanding. So, with give anything, at any cost, we have to protect. That is what they wanted. And they have lost at that time in 1530s itself. The Barada community has lost in the war against the Arabs who were trying to capture the Pearl Fishery Coast. 2,000 people, 2,000 solid youth killed in the battle because they were from the from distance they fired 
with the guns they have killed these people and these people were having the country weapons you have the sword you have you know like all the normal nice. ordinary uh, weapons and they were not able to succeed and uh, and these arabs were uh, taking moment taking momentum they were winning now the situation prompted these people the headmans the prominent personalities in the barada community they were uh, they were looking for something already there is a need for portuguese mm. they were coming here in see it's an unknown land they have come here they wanted a warrior community to protect them here in the unknown land and at the same time this uh, the, the, the valiant community a uh, great warriors great sailors they were also looking for they were also in the need there is a demand there now somebody middleman and he is called joam de cruz he has uh, discussed with both of, both of them and come on why don't you come and meet them and the portuguese are having guns why don't you take the guns from there you need only guns and these people when they they took gun from portuguese and they chased the arabs and it is not only the protection of the livelihood it is not only the retaining of the livelihood in pearl fishery course mm. same time they were calling muruga lord muruga as machan sami mm. that is brother in law because they have given their daughter deivane to muruga mm. first uh, first wife uh, of muruga is deivane and they have given uh, and that uh, that love and affection for muruga is also there and protected the tirchandur muruga temple in that war otherwise Arabs would have converted that uh, Tirichandur Murugan temple into a gudown mm. to uh, keep all the uh, uh, you know arms and um, uh, amenities. Okay, so it is a it is a war, and it was a situation, and that situation they have gone and took the help of the Portuguese, and Portuguese said that see like you are they wanted somebody mm. without paying anything. they have not brought the army with them to protect them so they need a very strong community here to protect them and they have used their brain and they have cheated them saying that like come on you i want to be very good in good relation with you and you people seem to be worshiping your forefathers you are elders who were living with you now have gone for heavenly abode only uh, uh, those people are being uh, worshiped here in my place also in our place also there are people who lived good they are jesus christ and mother mary and all that and we have we have not tolerated my dear uh, girl she have, they have not tolerated hmm. the community is having that much uh, you know knowledge means the generosity hmm. see we are in a good faith our culture is bharat mata's culture and that culture we don't tolerate mm. tolerate is well, it is with the hatred mm. see i don't i i can tolerate with somebody which whom i don't like also mm. but i have a culture which will accept right i will accept you whoever you are yes. and barada community in 1530s accepted portuguese they brought these two these one two three or the gods we say they are also on heavenly abode and they have lived here mm. and they were in 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 kural there is a there is a there is a kural uh, i can say vayathul valvangu valvan vanurayum daivathul vaikapadum abdin abdi now these people are treated as gods mm. now in my place they are god why don't you take them i will accept what is there because you know today a hindu going to a christian temple is not big deal he will go with the same spirit same love same affection go to a christian temple and he will also worship there but a christian cannot come to a hindu temple and take prasad there he will not accept prasad he will not worship there you understand this is that culture mm. and we had a great culture of bharat mata right. and we had accepted christianity on that basis okay. now because of repeated marketing efforts mm. repeated safe guarding yes sir and the efforts we have become an island and today in my culture i am an alien in my culture i am a different culture that is been realized by me and i wanted to chronicle life i have become a chronicler of life only because of that that question why i have a great faith why should i borrow another faith you understand I understand um you had supported the narendra modi government 
yeah. and uh, consequently faced some uh, disturbances because of that. Can yes. you just tell us about that? See, look here. At that time, prior to 2014 and, you know, the January, February, March, mm -hmm. and prior to that time also, India was facing a lot of problems internationally. Call any uh, any division, any uh, you know, I can say any uh, section. Like, is it uh, games? Is it research? Is it education? Is it industry? Anything for that matter, any area for that matter. Indians were not pride enough to you know uphold you know like uh, uh, lift your face and say that I am able to face the world. This pride was not there. We were always down. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. No, today, I am a 30 years experience in shipping. 30 years I have been working in shipping. Mm -hmm. And in my blood, my father's gene is there. No, mm -hmm. in, my, in my system, my father's gene is there. Mm -hmm. My father has worked in Chaugle steamships as a sailor for 40 years. Right? My grandfather, who has worked as a labor, ordinary labor in a port in Colombo. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, at least third generation gene is there with me. Okay. Understand? In shipping, we have, see, for immediately for reference, I have something to refer, no? Mm -hmm. So, as a fisherman, you can immediately refer fishing. In fishing, what is happening? Fishing, you go to an yeah, ordinary country, I call Dubai, I call Singapore, I call Colombo, very, very ordinary country, chest born babies. Mm -hmm. Go to Singapore, go to Dubai. What happens? The way in which the fishing industry is flourishing there. They have, what is the length of coast in Singapore? What is the length of coast in Dubai and uh, Colombo? But why and how they are making it as a big successful business and big economy over fishing? It is dedication. Mm. It is leadership. Mm. It is love and affection towards the country. Yes. That was missing prior to 2014. March that time mm -hmm. and in in shipping today I am saying I have 30 years of experience in ship merchant marine activities you see when in the global level we also have a maritime greatness mm -hmm. India is having maritime supremacy in the past right our kings were going our businessmen our uh, uh, the uh, exporters were going reaching up to China mm -hmm. you see Going to China today is a problem because people will not, uh, will not like it because of the difference in climate. But today, you have a great ship, you have a great flight to go, you have hotels there, you have hotels here, you have Dubashes here, Dubashes there, you can learn the language and things have become very easy. Chinese are coming here, you are going there, things have become easy because of technology. But in thousand years, in thousand BC, when Rajendra Chola went to uh, China and that region, he was having an ambassador there. Rajendra Chola was having an ambassador there in China. How it was possible to have to protect his guild. Guild means the traders, the uh, exporters guild. He has put his uh, son, the Yuvaraj. The Yuvaraj was put in a ship and the, that ship is going in front of the fleet of 10 ships from here. And we were operating ships there. So, that time is the maritime supremacy. Today, I am not talking about the maritime supremacy. But somebody who had that maritime supremacy to think of my country is having 7,500 plus kilometer long coastline. Why not I think of, of a maritime supremacy, my dear? I can think. And today, when I say a 7,500 coast, coast it is not only that 7,500 kilometer long coastline I have and that is why I want a maritime supremacy. No. And India, all over India, it is dedicated working people. Call it anywhere. Kashmir, Kanyakumari, Haldia, that is West Bengal, or to Chikka, Oka, Varavel, Jamnagar, Bhavnagar in Gujarat. Everywhere dedicated people traditionally producing communities. Producing community, you have to understand. That is why our economy was rich up to 13th, 14th, 15th century till the looters, the, the Portuguese, the Dutch and the British come into India. We were very rich and 
only after that time we are surviving now today that is a one particular scene now i can i want to compare it after independence now all these looters have gone now you have been given a chance to rule the country you are administering the country you understand this was our status earlier we were like this and today we are like this and now the administration the ruling everything is given to you every the, you have been voted to become a ruler of the country and what is happening here in after 70 years my dear no indian port is having a place in the top 10 ports in the world globally there are top 10 ports in the world not even one port of india is there same time we have to immediately compete with our immediate competitor because in the 13th and 14th century and 15th century china was first india was second india was first china was second that was the competition now today in this top 10 ports seven ports are from china not even one port coming in the 30th list you know 30 list also what is the reason why why do i say this i am a person who is involved in the commercial shipping i am able to see if i am in the computer field what is the defect what is the fault what is the deficiency i will be able to say today with the 30 years of 30 long years of experience i am saying why my port is not there why not there mm. now today also you are developing so many things right i think i will answer this that time so i was thinking somebody has to come with a spirit with a capacity with the face to the world mm. with all figure eh with the love and affection with the dedication somebody has to come as a leader not your prime minister yes mm, 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 prime minister. Okay. this i i hate i want my prime minister to be very strong yes in front of uh, the mighty america yes in front of the mighty russia yes somebody very valiant somebody very strong somebody capable of conquering somebody capable of achieving somebody result oriented i wanted that i am an ordinary citizen of india i not i was not somebody i was not somebody so and so so and so i am an ordinary citizen of india who was thinking i am repeatedly defeated india is repeatedly defeated and india has to succeed we need a face first of all we need a figure first of all we need a strong man and strong leader that time in the list in some in the platform in the podium who were standing modi stood first and i selected modi and that was very good reason for him to be selected and till today maybe difference of opinions maybe why not modi do this why not modi delaying this all that questions are there i have i am a, I, i am i am criticizing but with dedication with the law yes you should have done this way you should have done one 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 man cannot be always correct he has to look up to so many things i am only i am only looking in shipping it is only shipping there in india so many things so he has to see so like there are there are difference of opinions but still i prefer modi understood <laughs> yeah thank you so much um the last question i have for you is can we talk shortly about what your next work is is that also based on the coastal region i have started writing with questions right yes. in my olden days in my childhood why there is a faith within the faith this was a question why they are my coastal communities are economically socially and politically Back. having issues why don't they become leader and the leader is not why why the leader is not emerging these were the questions and when i was questioning this and researching this i was able to see the uh, people who are all what is their spending pattern what is their income pattern what is their social life cultural life what are the history they have what is the background of their culture all that i was searching and that is the product ali sulul mm. you understand mm. so this was about the small village a small community in a small village having katamaran as their uh fishing gear for a livelihood now moving next i have seen in tutukurin the same coastal communities having a different type of a profession some some are doing 
the um, salt making, some are doing pearl diving, some are sailors crossing oceans, taking cargo, taking goods, consignment out of one country to the other country. But the same people who have invented the, when suppose you see a, a, a catamaran has transformed to be a vallam, a small craft and it has become a boat and now it has become a sailing vessel. So that is a transformation. There is a technological transfer. The same community, the third generation has become, you know, like stagnant. Mm. The state of inactivity, dormant, no action. So what will happen? What will happen this, uh, to this community? That means what will happen to Bharatmata? What will happen to the nation if it becomes stagnant? If one generation has become stagnant, and what will happen? That is the question. And that made That's me good. to write Korkai. And the next is Astinaburam, which is talking about the commercial shipping of today. That has come out in 2016, I believe. And that is talking about the present day merchant marine activity, commercial shipping industry. Right. I have decided maybe, you know, temporarily not to write. Okay. Right. Maybe I will have uh, some articles here and there, right. And today I feel because of traveling here and there, I am able to see the emptiness of the education, the null and void of the education system. We have become, you know, uh, the uh, degree holders, but the degree holders are not contributing producers, entrepreneurs, and Today, the degree holders are not even appointed as a bonded labor. The reason is the creativity, the innovating spirit is not there in education. And today, India is proudly proclaiming to the world, our politicians are proclaiming to the world, we have the number one youth population in the world. Compared to Japan, compared to Australia, compared to any country. India has the number one youth population, but number one youth population for population, not for innovation. If there is today the economy is an innovation based economy, it is not the mass production. India is an agrarian economy. And what is happening in agriculture today? India is a fishery economy. We have to think different. And create people to get into their own field because see for see a blacksmith is a bond by blacksmith and if you become make him an engineer he will perform he will he will be a creative person in that field and somebody who is there uh, in a different uh, landscape and make him as an engineer how is it possible this is this system maybe i have to do still more research, research. And that research may prompt me to write something. I don't know. Maybe. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, interesting talking to you. Thank you so much, sir.